Would you help me welcome Pastor Dwayne Hicks as he comes tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. to could hit them notes just want her to know that I used to could hit them notes Trevor. you know not anymore but I used to back in the day you know two or three years ago or 12 or 25 or something anybody get any rest this afternoon anybody here tonight that wasn't here this morning Anybody here the first time you've been in the service with me? You were here this morning, girl. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd tell you that up front. Because I may say something that might hurt your feelings, and I just, I like to apologize in advance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's easier to get for, forgiveness than permission, you know? So I'm just telling you right up front, I'm sorry. And, don't hold it against this church. They're good people. They, they, I mean, they're good. they have poor taste in, in guest speakers, but they, they're really good people. Amen. amen. I don't know if she was amen in that they're good people or that they have poor taste in guest speakers. <laughs> I choose not to be offended. Would it be possible for me to get a bottle of water? Yeah. We got it? Yeah. All right. As long as you, I don't mean, okay. I had some people in our church several years ago. They were on the front road, and they were just kind of getting rambunctious. So I took my water bottle and sprayed them. <laughs> Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy. Anyway. We used to have a Methodist preacher in our little town. I loved him. He was a great guy, just a really great guy. But he told me this joke. And I, I wanted you to know that he was a Methodist preacher because that way you know it's a Methodist-approved joke. Okay? It's important. It'll make more sense in just a minute. But these three little boys had been to the Baptist church, and they had, had revival, and all these people started getting baptized. Well, them little boys thought that was the greatest thing they'd ever seen. So they decided they were going to go get them a goat. And they were going to baptize a goat. Do any of you know that goats hate water? They, goats want absolutely nothing to do with water. So these little boys, they, they, they dragged this goat down to the creek, and they tried to get him in the creek, and he butted, and he kicked, and he stomped, and he threw them all in the water, and he ran back away. And they drug him down there again, and then they drug him down there again, and they drug him down there again. And finally this little boy said, listen, let's just sprinkle him and let him go to hell like the Methodists do. <laughs> the Methodist pastor told me that. It's a great joke. <laughs> Let me tell you one more. This little boy, you, back in the day, back in the day, there was this thing where you had to do pastoral visitations, where you had to go to people's homes. Remember that? Oh, my gosh, I'm so glad that's over. And, and you had to go to people, you know, and the pastor would come and visit, you know, and come around and visit and, and, and sit in the front living room and, you know, and talk and all this kind of stuff. Well, well the preacher had come to visit, and little Johnny was out in the garage, and he didn't know the preacher was there. And he comes running in there. He says, Mama, 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 there was a rat in the garage, but I want you to know I beat him and I stomped him and I stomped him and I beat him and then I stomped him some more, Mama. And he turned and looked and saw the preacher sitting over there and he said, And Mama, then the good Lord called the poor thing home. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. We talked this morning about acting like Jesus. That little boy about acting like Jesus. But anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. I want to ask you a question. I love to ask questions. Because I think, I, think, I think people learn more from asking questions than answering questions. I really do believe that. I really do believe that. And I believe most people can figure out their own problems if you'll just keep, an, keep asking them enough questions about it. Most people are carrying the answer, they just don't know it. So my question to you tonight is, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? 
Because I can tell you, we're never going to change our behavior if we don't first change what we're thinking about. Come on. It's not possible to change your behavior without your thought life changing. With what you're magnifying and what you're meditating on and what, you, what, you, what, you, what you're thinking about. I've always loved words, even, even when I was a little boy. I've just always loved words. And, and when I was a young man, I wanted to be an attorney. And I thought I would be. That's what I thought I'd grow up to be an attorney. And I, I'd get all these prophetic words about being in ministry, and I'd just reject all of that. I said, I don't know what weed you're smoking, but that ain't going to be me. And here we are. <laughs> right? But I've always loved words, and I've always loved the English language. And I've always sort of found it fascinating how sometimes in the Word of God, how important a comma is. You ever thought about how important a comma is? Now, I understand that we're dealing with an English version that was written from Greek and Hebrew. I, I get that. I understand that. But you know, God inspired this too. <clears throat> and sometimes I'm always fascinated about where a comma falls in a scripture. And sometimes I think, I just wonder if we move the comma, how it would change anything. You ever thought about that? Because sometimes it really drastically changes something if you just move the comma. I'm going to give you a really, really good example of that. In Proverbs 23, Proverbs 23, Laura, I'm in, in the New King James just because I wanted to mess with you. In Proverbs 23, 7, we all know this scripture. It says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, comma, so is he. But what if you move the comma? So as a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so is he. That's powerful, isn't it? As a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so is he. Sometimes just the movement of that comma, it doesn't it shift things. Doesn't it shift things? You know, they had this, 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 they all do common core education in this state. Oh, my gosh, I don't know what level of hell that came from, but, I mean, it's a mess, right? It's, it, it's an absolute mess. But most of us in this room, when we learned our multiplication tables, we learned that by going over it and 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 over it, and over it until we knew it by heart. heart. And how did we learn it by heart? is that we went over it and 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 we went over it until we learned it by heart. So as a man thinketh, comma, in his heart, so is he. So what you're thinking about and 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 then you're thinking about it some more, that gets in your heart, doesn't it? So my question to you tonight is, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Because if we're ever going to end up being like Jesus and walking like Jesus and talking like Jesus that we talked about this morning, it's going to have to start with a renewal of our mind and a changing of our mind. Right? Right? But this is the sort of mystery, if you will, that most people never get to wrap their head around. We, how many of you know we live in a day, in an hour, in, 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 in a condition unlike anything I have ever seen before that, that, that the level of, 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 of personal responsibility is none. It's always somebody else's fault. It's never my fault. It's never my fault. I, I, I saw a, a little meme the other day, and, and it, this kind of applied to me, Treva. It said, you know, that phrase that, you know, I could be wrong. That just don't sit right. I mean, that, that just don't sit right, Bub. It can't be me, right? It 
It's not that funny. But sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes the problem that I'm having and the mess that I'm in is because of me. John Wayne once said, life is hard. Life is really hard if you're stupid. Now, I didn't say that. John Wayne said that. I happen to greatly agree with him. My wife doesn't let me use that word, so I, that's why I always blame John Wayne. It works so far. It's his fault. Exactly. Who, who said that? Amen. Amen. It's John Wayne's fault. It's not my fault. But we live in a time where personal responsibility does not exist anymore. Because it's always somebody else's fault. Many years ago, I had uh, been asked uh, by, by Frank Harvey. Well, and by the way, I was on the uh, phone with him this afternoon, and he sends his love, and he sends his blessings to Harvest Church. And uh, he just wanted me to let you know that. He's, a, he's an awesome man, isn't he? He, he, really, he really is. When I get grown, I want to be like him. I probably won't ever be, but I would like to be, you know. Several years ago, he asked me to serve on an AOT of, of a church that he oversaw in a, let's just say another state. How's that? Not North Carolina. And we, how it worked was that members of the church, several members of the church, like 25 of them, we sent out this questionnaire. The church was in, in I mean, in absolute free fall decline. Things were in horrible situations. I mean, people were leaving right and left. It was just a mess. It was just a, it was just a hot mess. And, and so they sent out these questionnaires, and the questionnaires were sent out anonymously for people to kind of, you know, feel free to express their, this is what's wrong in my opinion kind of thing, you know. And, and so they sent out those questionnaires, and then those of us that were serving on this AOT, the Apostolic Oversight Team, we were brought in to see if we could sort of save this church and salvage this church and keep it from absolutely failing. And, and <laughs> it was sort of interesting because the pastor got to choose who got the questionnaires. Yeah. And, and I found it sort of fascinating because he sent out like, what did, did I tell you, wasn't it like 40 of them? It was a, a crazy number. But he made this mistake of saying to us that whatever you all discover in these questionnaires, because they were anonymous, whatever that is, we'll deal with it. And if I'm the problem, then I'm the problem. And I'll man up and accept that. And I thought, we shall see. So we go, <laughs> Frank and Shirley and the other people that were on the AOT, we all we're invited to stay at some dear friends of ours house. We have, we have some dear friends that live in that particular state and they are what you would call filthy, stinking rich. I mean, they just got more money than they know what to do with. And so my wife, Sherry, goes and, and, and we were staying in their home and, and, and so, I mean, Frank and Shirley and, and the other people of the L tip, I mean, we are, we are working because this place is a mess. And Sherry, they're out going out to eat, and they're, they're all, you know, all, they're just having the, they're shopping, and all, they're just having the best time. I mean, the best time. And she said, in fact, she says to us when it was all over, and we were just about crazy, she said, you know, if y'all ever want to do this again, just let me know. <laughs> Frank said, Sherry, shut up. <laughs> Long story short, we started this on Thursday night. By Sunday afternoon, I am just about up to here with the craziness of this situation. And so we're down now to having a whole group discussion, and, and, and we were sitting on this panel, and, and everybody, everybody kind of was able to air what they wanted to say, and all blah, 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 blah. And Treva, I came to the end of myself. Now, as only God's mercy could do, it took me till Sunday afternoon. And we'd been doing this since Thursday. I mean, great, God was gracious and he was kind. And I was until Sunday afternoon. I mean, for the most part, you know. 
And this, be quiet now. And this woman stands up in this meeting and she said, I just want to ask a question. Do you think that the root cause of all of these problems is that there is a, a Leviathan spirit in this church? Frank was sitting on my left and I, I leaned over to him and I said, Please, may I? <laughs> he said, Dwayne, I mean, this is all just between he and I be nice. I said, Frank, I can't. <laughs> well, be as nice as you can, because he's had it too. And I said, ma'am, we've been at this since Thursday. We are going in the wrong direction. This is not getting any better. It's getting worse by the minute. And I'll tell you why it was getting worse by the minute. Because we are constantly going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And at this time, in, this has been many years ago. I never even heard of a Leviathan spirit. But you see, what we were at is we were at a place and a position in this meeting that we were wanting to blame something. Because no matter what the problem is, it cannot possibly be me. I said, ma'am, you're not going to want to hear what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. I said, you know what the biggest problem in this church is? Is you're full of gossip and you're backbiting, and you're unforgiving, and you're unkind to each other, and you need to grow up. That's the biggest part of the problem. I don't know anybody named Leviathan, <laughs> but he ain't the problem. You are. Frank reaches over and puts his hand on my thigh. Just that. I knew what he meant. Shut up, Dwayne. So I did. I told that story to, to say this. The, the, for the record, the church did not recover. The church did not recover. When we presented our findings to the pastor and to the leaders of the church, the one that started by saying, if I'm the problem, I'm out of here. Well, guess who was the problem? He's still there today, pastoring 10 people in a church that holds about 1,000. I take no joy in that at all. That was not the plan. But if we cannot take responsibility for our own actions and our own words, come on. Sometimes it's not some spiritual problem. Sometimes it's not some demon under some rock. Sometimes it's because you need to shut up and grow up. In Christian love, of course. Right? Sometimes we, we kind of always want to blame the devil. We always want to blame some spiritual problem. We always want to blame some supernatural situation. And listen, those things are real for sure and certain, but sometimes it's because we just need to grow up. Well, that's never going to happen if you don't change your mind. One of the things that we don't recognize, in, not only in the body of Christ, but I just don't think people in general, I just don't think people in general get this. Your mind belongs to you. Now, I know that's a news break, and it's a, it's, a, you know, it's a Fox News alert, but you don't belong to your mind. It belongs to you. Come on. And if it belongs to you, then you can change it. You can change it. Had a man come up to me after the service. I'm not going to point him out, but he, he's here tonight. He came up to me after the service. He said, you know, there was a man that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stand him. I just couldn't absolutely stand him. And he said, now we're best friends. Well, that starts by changing your mind. It starts by changing your mind. We said, well, I, 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 I just have these thoughts that I can't control. Yes, you can. Change your mind. Change, change your mind. Change your mind. It belongs to you. You can say, you know what? I'm not going to think that way anymore. Sometimes we can't change our mind because we don't have the motivation to change our mind. We, we don't have the want to, if you will. 
I had this man tell me many years ago, he said, I just have an anger problem and I just can't control it. I, I, I just have a real anger problem and I can't control it. And I said, no, you can't control it with that 105-pound wife of yours. But I guarantee you, if I put you in a room full of hell's angel and that thing come on you, you'd find somewhere to sit down. <laughs> you'd find somewhere to sit down. I mean, just a whole lot of self-control could come over you in that moment. Why? Because you'd have the motivation to. Sometimes we can't control ourselves because we don't have the motivation to. We don't want to. Pick up your toes. I just got to have this piece of cake. Well, that got ugly, didn't it? Well, you don't. You don't. You want the piece of cake. Now, I can say that as a fat man. Because this ain't built by cake. I don't like sweets much. This is all potatoes. Come on. This is all straight carbohydrates right here, baby. There ain't no cake involved. We don't have the motivation. Here we go. Turn with me to Colossians. Colossians chapter number 3. Laura, I'm going back to the Amplified just to mess with you. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. Very familiar scripture. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at. Right? I mean, you're never going to hit the target if you don't aim at it. Aim at and seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. I have this thing every, everywhere I go, whether I go to the grocery, I go to the grocery store every day. But wherever, wherever I go, I always ask the cashier, are you being sweet today? And most of them lie and say, well, yes, I'm always sweet. And I said, nobody's always sweet. Even Jesus got mad and flipped the tables over in the temple. I mean, nobody's always sweet, right? Then they normally say, well, I'm trying. I said, well, now trying I can buy into. I said, well, just do this. Just aim at it. Aim at it. This right here says that if we have been raised with Christ, and we have, correct? And we have, correct? Then aim at and seek those things which are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, verse 2, and set, and set. Oh, my. You know what that sounds a lot like? An act of my will. And set your minds, and listen, and keep them set on what is above. Because, you know, sometimes you can set your mind. I told you this morning, for those of you that, that weren't here this morning, I told the church this morning, my driving's not saved. It's just not. It needs to be probably, well, it don't want to be, but it needs to be. But it's not saved. So sometimes when you get up in the morning and you set your mind on things above and you pull out on that road, and somebody pulls out in front of you and they've got their little car for a walk. <laughs> Doing a rapid 37 miles an hour. Come on. How many of you know that you have to choose in that moment to reset your mind? Because you have to decide, no, I am not going to say the things that just come up in me. I am going to choose, Lord, to bless them. you got to reset it. I mean, you can't just wake up in the morning and have a great time with the Lord and that be the last thing you do. You're going to have to constantly throughout the day reset and reset and reset and reset. Come on. Well, guess what? You can because God says you can. We can change our mind and we can reset our mind and keep resetting our mind. So, well, how many times do I have to do that? I don't know. I don't know what kind of condition you're in. <laughs> right? And 
Set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, and not on the things that are on this earth. We, we talked a little bit about this this morning. But we have to make a decision not to know people after their flesh. And in order to do that, we have to set our mind on and choose to look at them the way God looks at them. Choose to look at them the way God looks at them. Now, sometimes that's difficult, isn't it? Come on. I mean, just be honest about it. Sometimes that's very difficult. I mean, you think, I know God loves you, but I, I don't know why. <laughs> but he does. And if he does, then I can. Yes. And if he does, then I'm supposed to. Yes. Right? Yes. And you have to talk yourself into that. And you have to keep digging, and you have to keep digging, and you have to keep digging. You know, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think it is so important that you find something good. You find something good. And you dwell on that. Whatsoever is, come on. Whatsoever is good. And you dwell on that. And you, that's where you set your mind. You say, but they got all this other stuff going on. Well, don't, don't, don't think about that. Just don't think about that. Well, how am I not going to think about that? Set your mind. Choose. Choose. Because I'm going to tell you something, there's good in everybody. Amen. Yeah, even that one. Some of your mind just immediately went to somebody. <laughs> Is your shirt pink or red? Pink. Yeah. Your mind immediately went to somebody. And, and yes, there, I, I'm just going to say there's good in them. I won't get any more specific than that, but them. There is good in them. It's hard to find. Come on. Sometimes you got to root it out. But what happens when you choose to think on that and dwell on that? You change your mind. Do you know sometimes you have to talk yourself into forgiveness? Yes. Yes. I, well, Bubba, in his illustrious announcements this morning, made all the men, including me, I didn't know what we was about to say, but I said it because Bubba told me to. And I realized I lied in church. Because he made us declare that we were going to go online or go somewhere and sign up for the hot dog roast on Friday night. So I said it. Well, I'm not going to be here on Friday night. But I made the declaration because I'm scared of Bubba. Why? Because he said when you say it out loud, there's a memory that kicks in place and you will remember that. Well, guess what? <laughs> when you need to forgive somebody, say it. Well, I don't feel it. I didn't, you don't have to feel it. You don't have to feel it at all. Just say it. And then say it again this afternoon. And say it again this evening. And say it again this tomorrow morning and all day tomorrow. Just say, you know what? I, I, ch I choose to forgive Treva. I choose it. And you just keep saying it, and you keep saying it, and you keep saying it. And I'm telling you, church, if you will keep on resetting your mind and saying it and saying it and saying it, what will happen is you will begin to feel it. Yes. You will. Yes. How long is it going to take? I don't know. I don't know what condition you're in. You have to talk yourself into forgiveness. But I'm going to tell you something. You can talk yourself into anything. Yeah. Yeah. Good, bad, and ugly. <coughs> Sherry and I used to know a lady that she, she either had it, she either had it coming on, or she was just getting over it. She was in that level of sickness at all times. I'm convinced that on her headstone it says, See, I told y'all I was sick. 
because she always had something. She either had it now, she felt it coming on, or she was just getting over it. That's all she talked about. Sick. And listen, the last thing you ever wanted to do was say to her, you know, you don't look good. Oh, no, no, she'd go put on her pajamas and get in the bed. Because you have just confirmed what's already going on in her. Anybody know anybody like that? You, 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 just, you just don't look good. You have come in agreement with what's already, uh-oh, you've come in agreement with what's already going on in them, right? That's all they needed. It's just feed that flesh just a, a little bit. A little bit, right? See, the thing is this. What you feed grows. Right? What you feed grows. I'm living proof. Bubba, you weren't supposed to say yes right then. It's talking about how fat I am. What you feed grows. But what you starve dies. The problem with that is this, and everybody who's ever had any issues with your weight in your life, this is, I expect you to say amen. The problem with that is it seems as if the feeding process and the growing process happens a lot faster than the starving process. Come on. Amen. Come on. All the fat people said amen. amen. Listen, just for the record, you skinny folks, we're going to take over this country again. <laughs> We about sick of y'all in your little tight jogging pants all over the place. We over it. It's time for the fat people to unite and stand up and say, we've had enough. All we got to do is sit on you and it's over for you. Come on. I've just decided I'm not going to identify as a fat person anymore. Because apparently these days you can just choose. Right? Y'all hush now. Y'all got me so messed up I don't even know what I'm talking about. What was I saying, bub? It was good. But, oh, what you, what, what you starve. The, the, but the reality is this. We, nev we don't have the luxury of knowing how close to the death of something in you was. You understand what I'm saying? You don't know how close to, the, to that addiction being dead. You don't know how close to that bitterness being dead. You don't know how close to that, 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 that pain being dead. You don't know how close that was. And something comes along and offers it just a spoonful. Just a spoonful, right? Yes. And life comes back to that thing. And here we go again. So what has to happen? We got to change our mind. Somebody, who said that perspective? Yeah. There, 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 there's, uh, in fact, I use, there's a, a, a meme I use at, uh, at home. And some of you, have, I'm sure, have seen this on social media. That there, there's a guy standing here and a guy standing there, and they're facing each other. And on the ground in front of this guy is a six. And on the ground in front of that guy is a nine. You know what I'm talking about? And that one guy said, well, I see a six. And that guy says, well, I see a nine. And he said, well, which one's right? Well, it depends on your perspective. I appreciate you saying that because sometimes when you can't get your mind changed, you have to change your perspective. And sometimes the only way to change your perspective is to get up from where you are, get up from that place of complacency, get up from that mire, get up from that pit, get up from, come on, arise, come on, arise. Get up from that place and move, move. Until that, if God said it was a nine and it looks like a six to you, you move until it's a nine in your life. Well, you get to choose that. You get to choose that by changing your perspective. I mean, perspective is powerful, isn't it? 
Romans 12, 2. Every one of us in here knows this scripture. Well, for the most part. I mean, I don't know. You. I don't know. I shouldn't have said that. Who knows how many people know it? I just lied again in church, bub. I'm going to have to get saved. Do something. We got baptized. I can't mess up the hair. No. She said, we got baptism coming up. But see, I'd have to mess up my hair. And I did that one time years ago, and, you know, the hair's been in place ever since. <laughs> Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something, church. And, 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 you know, this may be my last time here. I don't know. Y'all about to get a new pastor. He don't like me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, this could be your last time. Y'all don't be so excited about that. <laughs> but this one phrase to me needs to be declared and declared and declared to the church because I'm telling you from my humble perspective the church has become far too conformed to the world Amen. far too conformed to the world we have done everything to make the church more palatable to the world. When Jesus himself was the rock of offense. I mean, there are churches that you could walk in next Sunday and you would think you walked into a cruise ship. Now, let me be really clear. I think we ought to be friendly to people who are seeking. I really do. I really do. And I absolutely believe that you should be able to come in this church or any other church in whatever condition you're in. Whatever sin you are entangled in, whatever lifestyle you are entangled in, whatever, 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 you are welcome here. But just like Jesus doesn't leave us like he found us, we ain't going to leave you either. Not going to happen. Come on. It's getting really quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> right? You're welcome to come in here in any condition. But we expect you through the, listen, through the power of the Holy Spirit, not our judgment, through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, by the renewal of your mind, to be making progress. Because that's what we're doing. Come on. And there are no perfect people in here. But the goal is to be making progress. Correct? We're not where we want to be. But praise God, we're not where we used to be. Amen? I mean, there are things that have happened in our lives and, and our mind has been changed and reset so that we don't do some of the things that we used to do. Do we, do, do we still do some things that we don't need to be doing? Yes. Yes. But that's not the goal. It's not the goal to make everybody so comfortable that you can just live however you want to live. Come on. I'm trying. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and, ad and adapted, because we have adapted. Yeah. We have adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire, is that in your version? Yes, by the entire renewal of your mind. Now listen, church, that's not going to happen overnight. That's, right. that's, right. that's not going to happen overnight. 
It's a process. You ain't going to be completely nothing until you cross the river. Come on. That's where we're going to be perfected on the other side. But we've become so complacent in the church. We've become so conformed to this world. We have become so everything is okay and everybody is okay and everything, every sin is, you just, it's just all welcome here. We'll just mold and, 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 and we'll shift and we'll just do what, we'll just be whatever you need us to be. That only works from the standpoint of we do love you. And we're going to love you. And we're not going to leave you and we're not going to forsake you. And no matter how hard your battle gets and no matter how hard your journey gets and no matter how, how hard you have to fight this thing in your life, this sin that has you, we're here for you. Amen. We are here for you. Day or night, come on, you call me, I will talk you off the ledge every time. But what I'm not going to do is tell you it's okay to stay that way. Hmm. During worship tonight, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that prodigals have to come to the end of themselves. Right? Isn't that what he said? That when, I came, when he came to the end of himself. So many times we are trying to rush the process because we want the prodigal's home so bad. But until that, that prodigal comes to the end of themselves, listen, don't, don't, don't let this hurt you. But you don't want them home. Until they come to the end of themselves. Because if they come home and they're not at the end of themselves, that's that thing we were talking about just a few minutes ago, that you don't know how close it was to being over. And now you come and you not come to the end of yourself and we feed that just a little bit. That's going to encourage and entice. But you see, when you come to the end of yourself, and I'm telling you, Everybody in this room, on one level or another, at some point in your life, at some juncture in your life, you have come to the end of yourself. Amen. And when you did, that's when things changed. Right? That's when things changed. And I, so I, I, during worship tonight, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that there are prodigals. There, 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 there are natural prodigals that belong to families in this house, but there are prodigals of this house. I'm going to say what I'm saying. Prodigals that maybe your children or your grandchildren or whatever, yes, but they're also prodigals of Harvest Church. And I heard the Lord say, some of them today are coming to the end of themselves. Well, that's good news. That's good news. Because when we get to the end of ourself is when things start to shift. Amen? I want I, I don't know, I, this was not at all the direction I was going in, but I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. I, I'm an absolute firm believer in that. Just shift if you need to. I, I just feel so compelled to ask you, do, do, for those of you who actually have a prodigal, do they know they can come home? Do they know they can come home? Because I promise you, some of them don't. Some of them don't. Many, many years ago, we had a, a young man in our church, and he, he worked in a retail establishment, and he had a, a girl that worked him, with him, and she was married to a woman. The girl that worked with him knew nothing about Jesus, wasn't raised in church, didn't know anything about anything spiritual or religious or anything. 
but she was married to a girl that had grown up in church her whole life. And so this guy, he approaches me and he says, I don't know how to deal with this. He said, but I like this girl. I mean, I mean, we're, we're friends at work. He said, what do I do? I said, what do you mean? What do you do? You love her. And you be friends to her. And you develop relationship. This is about to get sticky for some of y'all. I said, invite them to your home. Oh, my. That just got ugly, didn't it? <laughs> invite them to your home. Develop a relationship with them. And if they invite you to their home, you go there. And just love them. You ain't got to say nothing. Just love them. Don't preach to them. Don't quote them any scriptures. Don't ask them if you can pray for them, for God to deliver them. Just go and be good. Because it is the goodness of God that causes, 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 that's a powerful word, causes people to repent. It's the goodness of God that causes people to repent. Not our, not our guilt, not our shame, not our, not, not, not our, 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 our scripture quoting, not our prayer. Oh, my. Oh, my. It's the goodness of God. So you just go and be good. Well, sure enough, he and his wife and this girl and her wife, I mean, that just feels weird, doesn't it? They developed a relationship, a friendship among the four of them. And they'd go out to eat and they'd go to different places. Well, lo and behold, we had a home group that met at their house. This guy and his wife. And the girl at work wants to come. So she comes. Knows nothing about church. Nothing. Her wife had grown up in church her whole life. Listen to this. Uh, that's why I ask you, do, you, do your prodigals know they can come home? Grew up in church her whole life. When she came out as a homosexual to her family, they told her, you're not welcome here. You can't come to Christmas. You can't come to Easter. You cannot come to a birthday party. You're not welcome in our home. Don't that sound just like Jesus? I mean, can you imagine Jesus saying that to somebody? So she was devastated, of course. What did that do? That trapped her. Because the only person who now is telling her that I love you is this homosexual that she's married to. Come on. Do your prodigals know they can come home? So this rocked on. Well, guess what? They started coming to the home group, both of them. So I go to the home group and I say to the people, I got there early one night and I said, listen, this is what's about to happen. These two people are coming. Do not say a word. You love them as if they were two brand new people that have showed up here that you have never seen before and you welcome them with open arms. Ooh, there's some religious devils just being ruffled all <laughs> up in here right now. And you just love them. Well, you know, there's this little thing about the Word of God That says it is the goodness of God that causes people to repent. Amen. So they started coming to home group. And we did nothing but love them and be good to them and treat them as if they were anybody else. Now, we just talked about this a few minutes ago, didn't we? About not being conformed and, and not conforming to the world. So the young man asked me, he says, what am I going to do? I said, well, this is what's going to happen. They will ask you. And this is the question they'll ask you with. Do you really love us? Do you really love us? The answer to that question is, yes, I do. Just like you are. 
And I said, then the next question is they're going to say, well, so what do you, how do you really feel about us and our lifestyle? Well, that's a whole different question. And this is your answer. And I, I, I'm telling this story for somebody, I, I'm, and maybe more than one somebody's. I said, but this is your answer when they say, how do, how do you feel about our lifestyle? This is your answer. You say to them, I do not regulate my own life by my feelings. Come on, because I've been bought with a price. I don't regulate my own life by my feelings. I have shown you that I love you. I have shown you how I feel about you. Now, the question is, if you're asking me, what does the Word of God say about it? Now, that's a whole different issue. And I will tell you that, and I will share that with you, but I have already shown you how I feel. Well, guess what happened? I mean, I might just be a prophet. That's exactly what happened. All of a sudden, Treva, both girls began to recognize this is not right. This is not good. They ended up separating. The girl that didn't know anything about God, didn't know anything about church, her mama just let her come home. The girl that grew up in church didn't have anywhere to go. She didn't have anywhere to go because her family had already rejected her. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Jesus doing some that to anyone? Not going to happen. I've said all that to tell you this. We can do both. We can not only not be conformed to this world, we can minister to the world, come on, the goodness of God, and lead them through the process of being transformed themselves. It doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't have to be black and white. It doesn't have to be you're in or you're out. Come on. Amen? There's a process. There's a way forward. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got to figure out a way forward without denying the Word of God. But if you want to, you can. Come on. If you want to, we can. I was talking to Pastor Brian before the services tonight, and, and, and you know, you, you are, you've already entered a time of transition in this church, and and, you know, that's often a very um, shaky ground sort of thing. Because change, and, and people don't like change. They've always said that. It's always been said in the church that people don't like change. I don't believe that. People don't like your change. <laughs> if it's my idea, this is the greatest idea there's ever been. And you ought to just suck it up and deal with it. Right? Yeah. It's not that we don't like change. We don't like your change and we don't like your ideas. Come on. Amen. But this church has entered into a season of change. Change. That can be a very powerful thing. It can be a very powerful thing. When we transitioned, I don't know how many years ago it's been now, I had been a part of this church and had served in as, as an associate pastor of this church for 22 years. Listen, I had a good gig. I had no interest in being a senior pastor. I had a great gig. My, my, my pastor let me go and travel every time the door opened. He just welcomed that. No problem whatsoever. Why in the world would I want all that responsibility? Well, here we are. I'm telling you, Harvest Church, that, that year, the, the year of our transition, 
we didn't lose one family. Not one family. Now, that's still not true today. But that first year, we didn't lose one family. And I'm telling you, Harvest Church, I'm declaring to you prophetically, there is not going to be an exodus. There's not going to be an exodus. There's going to be an influx. There's going to be an influx. I really believe that. I really believe that. There's going to be an influx. Are things going to change? Yes. Yes. They need to change. Come on. They need to change. We need to be in a constant change. Come on. We, need, we don't need to look like we did yesterday. We don't need to do the same things we've always done. You need to prepare yourself that there may be some changes that you don't like. They're coming. It's all right. Trust this. Trust that God called a man. Well, if you struggle with that, let me tell you this. Because I really do want to give you a way out. If you struggle to think, well, I don't know if, if God, I just don't know if God's called him. No, I just don't. Well, trust him then. Because God spoke to him too. Correct? And trust your elders. You can find a path forward. And when changes happen that you don't like, change your mind. Change your mind. Well, we just, you now this just ain't the way Pastor Tad did that. No, it ain't. It ain't. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, now this, we just never used to sing this song right here. Now, Ethelene, we just, I just don't know how I feel about this. Change your mind. Change your mind. Amen? Amen? It can be done. It should be done. It needs to be done. I, I really feel like the Lord gave me this word about changing our minds because of the season you're walking into. To decide when things are not going exactly the way they used to go or when things are not going exactly the way you think they should go. I, I, I just hate to break this news to you. Not really, I don't. I'm going to tell you anyway. God didn't call you to be the pastor. He, he, he just didn't. And you ought to be so thankful about that. You ought to be so thankful about that. Because I promise you, every decision he makes and every decision the elder board makes, they're going to have to stand before God with that. What time is it? Oh my goodness, is it eight? I gotta quit, don't I? It's it's time for me to quit, isn't it, Trina? Huh? Can I say? Let me just do this really quick, and I and I really will quit. I I just I don't know why I'm so stirred about this, about changing our minds. When you walk in submission to the authority of this house. You are automatically under an umbrella of protection. Automatically. However, however, when that leadership has made a decision and you disagree with it and you say, you know what, now I'm just not doing that. You have now stepped outside out from under that umbrella. I said, well, how am I supposed to deal with that? Change your mind. And get back under that umbrella. Listen, let me be, let me be really clear. Nobody, you don't have to be yes men. You don't have to be yes men. If you don't agree with something, you have every right to call a meeting with the pastor, call a meeting with the elders if you want to, and say, listen, you know, I just don't feel this. Go express that. 
to them and them alone. Because when they don't meet you with, oh, you're right. Well, now you think, well, I got to get up some help. So now I'm going to go meet with somebody else. And I just want you to know, brother, now I went and I, I, I met with that new pastor, that brother Brian. And do you know what he told me? Can you believe the nerve of him? I mean, what is he, 25? <laughs> what does he know? I got socks older than him. <laughs> well, see, now you're in really dangerous territory because now you have moved into a position that God hates. Because yes, yes, yes. God don't take lightly sowing discord. So what do you do? Let me give you the biblical example of what you do. You don't agree with something. I'm not talking about some petty nonsense something. But something that's just really weighing on you. And you've prayed about it and you can't get through it and you've prayed about it and you've changed your mind, you've done everything you can. But you just, it just is not sitting well with you. That's okay. Go and meet and talk. To him and him alone. Okay? You've expressed it, and maybe he still doesn't agree with you, still thinks you're the one in the wrong, and this, we, listen, I love you, but we're not changing this policy. This is what God has spoken to me. It's what he has spoken to the elders, and this is what we're going to do. You've said it. You left it with him, right? Okay? Now what do you do? Close your mouth, go home, change your mind, and say this to God. I did what I felt like I needed to do, and now I'm going to submit to my pastor. What happens in that moment? The umbrella is back over you. Listen to me really carefully. And if you were right, and if he was wrong, God will deal with him. He will. And you're still under that umbrella of protection. If you go and you meet with him and you try to talk him out of this new policy and he just won't go for it and he just won't go for it, he just won't go for it and you still think you're right and so instead you, you leave there and you're mad, come on. You're all, all ruffled up, all lathered up and you want to go and, and, and recruit people and tell everybody about that. You have removed yourself outside of the hand of God, the protection of God. The protection of God. So think it not strange when crazy things start happening. Come on. Why? Because you are outside of the umbrella of authority. You see, it comes down to this. Maybe you don't agree with him. Maybe you don't agree with him. You've said it. You've let it be known. And even if you leave that meeting and still think you are right and he is wrong, you go home and you begin to pray. You don't speak to anybody. You don't talk to anybody. You just pray. You just pray. Right? And if you're right, God will convict him. God will deal with him. And you'll be protected. But you see, we just have that problem. We just got to talk about it. We just got to talk about it. Well, you don't. This is what it comes down to. This is what it comes down to. It said, well, I just don't think he heard from God. I, 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 I just don't think he heard from God. I don't think he heard from God. Well, this is what it comes down to. If you can't trust him or you can't trust him, can you trust God? 
Can you trust God? Because if you will stay under proper authority and proper government, God will take care of you. And God will take care of this church. Believe it or not, God loves this church more than you do. Come on. God loves this church more than you do. And he's big enough to take care of it. Amen? Amen. Change your mind. Change your mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. Cherry and I love you. We're so honored to be a part of whatever God's doing here, what God has, has done here. Uh, we were trying to, Brian and I were talking about before the service. I don't know how many years I've been coming here. Because uh, time, I don't do that. Uh, I don't know if I've been here 10 years or 40. I just don't know. But I thank God for what he has done. When we come here, and I do not say this lightly, and I do not say this almost nowhere else. We feel like we come home. Every time, we just feel like coming, we come home. We don't get that. We don't get that. That's a blessing to us. And we love you. And I'm excited about what God's doing here. I'm excited about what God's doing here. Amen? I'm excited about what God's doing in Harvest. I'm excited about what God's about to do with Pat, Pastor Tad and Treva. Yeah. I'm excited. Amen. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you really, really ready? Yeah. If you're not ready, yeah. let the church say amen. Yeah. I'm just getting ready. Stand to your feet. If you haven't already changed your mind, pray about it tonight and change it in the middle of the night. (laughs) Renew your mind. So let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord. We thank you, Father, for the the timing of the word that is always in due season, Lord, when we need to hear it. And we thank you, Lord, for challenging us, Lord, with renewing our minds that we can have and we have the mind of Christ. And, Lord, we thank you for the mind of Christ. And, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and use us, Lord, for your glory and your honor, Lord, and continue to bless Harvest Church in this this year of transition. Father, we, we bless you, Lord, and we bless your people now as we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night, and hope to see you tomorrow night.